Hello, welcome back to Fist Entertainment for my next review. All right, so I just got done reviewing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Checked out the video, and um, I forgot to tell you what I was doing differently. Um, if you go ahead and go to your options viewing this um, video, as well as the last video, um, and click on Resolution Abilities, I officially, this is my second video that officially is in 2160 4K Ultra High Definition. And so, now if you couldn't see every little aspect about me on camera before, my old age, whatever, you can probably see it now because I'm in 4K now. All right. Well, how do I describe this one? Um, well, first off, I will say this is definitely not a rant. But there will be some stuff that... There, there's some negatives. Now, there's much more positives about this movie than there are negatives. Um, and, this, and that's where it gets very interesting because this particular film is notorious completely notorious among all critics everywhere to being the weakest link of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. I, for one, do not agree. There's, uh, because on, their, on everybody's ranking of this, this always goes in the bottom three. The, with the worst one being Next Generation, the second worst being Letterface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, and then, and then obviously... Is I'll reveal it now. 2013's Texas Chainsaw. And this is a 3D version on here too. I didn't know that because I, was, I wasn't paying attention to the disc. Or maybe it's just the artwork on a disc and threw me off. So, um, showcasing the still book. And this one does have a quote on it. Unlike a uh, Chainsaw Massacre still book. Family's a messy business. Ain't nothing thicker than blood. It's kind of catchy. All right, so Texas Chainsaw from 2013. Well, let's not start out with the negatives. Because I want to keep this as positive as possible. Um, let's start out with the positives. I like what they were doing with this movie. I actually kind of like like that they were trying to make their own their own like modern sequel to the original film. This because in this they were doing this long before Halloween did did it and um and Jason did all, all this. It's not, it's not really Jason. I can say I'm having Jason films um for longer, um, but Halloween did this. The screen films did it in little ways as well, um, but um, now I'll take it back. The screen films did it. It was just the Halloween films that did it. We get the idea. Go ahead and erase all of the sequels in the franchise that, that ever, ever happened, and then go ahead and uh, make a new clean slate based off of the first film. Is is like you know a template. In I actually kind of liked what they did with this movie by doing that. Now, I will get to negatives later, so I'm really trying to keep it a positive to start with. I like the story of legacy they, they have in this movie. Um, I like the, uh, I like, I kind of like what they did with Letterface because I know. It leads into a negative, but like I said, I will address the negatives later. But I liked how how they told it, and it does not take, you know, the whole bogeyman aspect out of Letterface at all in this movie. Doing it, it works somehow. Um. So before I go on to um, the negatives, because I'm trying to keep these reviews a little bit shorter, which is part of the reason why I'm recording stuff in 4K now, because if I can't see the cameras camera and I can't see myself in the camera 
and I can't go ahead and see where it is in running time, I just go off of talking to the camera, not knowing what to expect on when it does end up uh, uh, done with the video. And I kind of like that. I tend, to, I tend to make them longer when I can actually see see the uh, the runtime. Um, the plot of the movie. Again, there's no J card. So I'll go to, to it. Um, and uh, yeah, this will lead, lead into a negative as well, but we'll get to that as well a little bit later. It maybe will make sense of a few of a few things. A um, a woman basically gets Mel um, notifying her that her grandmother or great aunt or something like that, I think it's like great aunt, died recently. Yeah, what's pretty funny is I just watched this movie just a few hours ago. I just oh, I forgot it was a grandmother or aunt. I'm pretty sure it's a great aunt. Yeah, yeah, great aunt, or not not really great aunt. Yeah, yeah, just just aunt. Sorry, um, gets notified that her aunt died recently, and um, she inherits um, a, fa a family home, essentially, and so she goes to Texas. After finding out that her supposed parents have lied to her her entire life and she's not related to them at all, that she actually has a real family out there. And so she goes to Texas to her inherited home so that she can find her family and find out who she really is. They, push up, they pick up a hitchhiker. He was up to no good. He's just there to try to rip them off and stuff. And they go to this inherited house. Her and her boyfriend and a couple, you know, and, and another friend. Yeah, her, her boyfriend and her roommate or something. And they go pick up Hitchhiker on the way. They go to the house. Then they then they go out to do get buy groceries or something or go what out and check out the town or whatever, or try to find answers or whatever. And the hitchhiker starts ripping off all the stuff in the house. And he comes across this big key and unlocks this, uh, this door. And then starts fucking around downstairs or what past the door and like, so like cavern like area of the house. And then Letterface basically kills him. He's been there. And um, and basically, um, what leads to that is all her friends getting killed. And yeah, there's tell you, there's one other friend I forgot about too. So, um, two friends and her boyfriend and her and a hitchhiker. And I guess they did that for a reason. They want to do five people just so they can kind of do a parallel. Because there are a lot of parallels in this movie to the uh, original film. And uh, eventually, she discovers that her aunt had been taking care of the last surviving member of her family, which is Jedediah Sawyer, Letterface. He was the only remaining member of her family that, that wasn't killed by basically a lynch mob of urban justice after the events of the first film. And she finds out the um, story behind how her family got killed by the town folk. It's a part of like some urban justice because the town folk are like a lynch mob. And she gets justice for the death of her family by basically helping Letterface. And Letterface gets vengeance and kills the town folk that murdered the Sawyer family. And so, that's the plot of the movie. Now what's interesting is, that sounds like an interesting plot. Now we go into the negatives. That sounds like an interesting plot, and you would think that that would be good, right? Well, yes, it's, it's a good movie. It's a very, very entertaining film. I cannot argue that. I do not hate this movie. In fact, I like it probably better than everybody else does. I actually 
I actually have no problem returning to this movie. Now, when I first watched it when I was younger, I was like, no. Nope, I guess the only two Texas Chainsaw Massacre films that are worth a fuck is the first two movies. The rest of them are all shit. My opinion has definitely changed since. Like, for example, before I did this event, I would never, ever have watched Letterface from 2017. And then I did, and I was like, well, you know what? I like this movie. In returning to this movie, I don't know. I'm sorry, but I like this movie. I just want to make sure I know I got that across before I start talking about the negatives of the film. And this is and these negatives, they're just not negative enough for me to hate the movie. Apparently, they're negative enough for a lot of people to hate the movie. So where do I start with this? If something's not broken, you don't need to change it. You really don't. All right. Turning Letterface into an anti-hero. No. I really don't like that. It doesn't bug me nearly as much as it does everybody else because it works for the plot of this movie and it makes sense. And like I said before, um, he's still kind of the, the villain at the same time. He still is that boogeyman. And he's still doing all these things that Letterface does and so so well crafted at doing. It's still all there, but they decided to turn him in, turn him into an anti hero. And turn basically the the town folk that murdered the the, serial, the family of serial killers. Um yeah. The town folk that murdered the family of Serial killers by shooting them down with bullets and burning their house to the ground. Um, the farmhouse. I guess there's two houses. We didn't know that before, but I guess there's there's like this big rich house and then there's this this farmhouse. I guess the story's real house was the rich house and the farmhouse was something else. So they turned, basically, you should be the good guys into the bad guys, and the guys that are supposed to be the bad guys into the good guys. It just, it throws people off. It throws people off. It works for the context of this movie, and it, it still actually makes the movie good. And in a lot of ways, it makes the movie better. It makes the movie a whole lot better. Because, granted, would this have been a um, more interesting approach to the film to, to go ahead and have... Um, Oh yeah, Letterface is evil. These these serial killers and cannibals, they deserve the town to to murder, you know, to, to shoot them down with guns and burn their house down because they murdered all these people. Um and somehow have this you know, legacy this you know, descendant type character, you know, the the, the last survivor of the actual family you know, turn evil herself and team up with Letterface, would that have been even better? You know what? I don't think so. I don't think so. I I think that maybe they thought about doing that, but they decided to go the other direction. And honestly, I think it works going the other direction. And that's the first negative. Here's Here's the second negative. Here's the second negative. I don't like it when you do this. Um, in fact, um, I get a lot of Halloween 2018 vibes with this. Disregard all their films, even the ones that are legacy sequels. Let's disregard them. Right, you can't you can't pick on Letterface because it didn't exist at the time. You had that Texas Massacre three film. That's a different movie. But they did not need to leave Toby Huber's actual sequel out of it and just uh, start the story from from uh, basically where the last you know, where the first film ended. Literally, where the first film ended is where they start this movie. And I'm sorry, but I 
I am a big defender and a big fan of 1986's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I love that movie. So, throwing it in the garbage, this doesn't sit well with me. But I still find this cool. The way I look at Texas Chainsaw is like an alternate timeline, an alternate universe of its own that unfortunately didn't pan out to have more movies. And I think it would have been cool if it did. Because then the, the, it, they made a sequel to Texas Chainsaw. They could have turned turned our main character evil and she could have just been a, you know, a cannibal killer just like freaking Letterface. I think that would have been cool. But no, they, they decided not to do that. Uh, they decided to scrub it. Scrub it. And my last negative of the movie. My last negative of the movie. The, 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 the negatives of, these movie, of this movie is... They're there, but they're not enough to completely rant and hate the movie. The last one. The last one is more of an annoyance. This one, I can kind of explain away. Because I just watched the movie. I forgot it was an aunt or grandmother. This aunt. This, yeah, her aunt. Um, this is the way that I kind of look at it. It never ever tells you in this movie a definitive timeline. It's, it never ever is applied that our main character is in her 20s or her 30s or her 40s. And to give you a little bit of an idea about why I will completely disagree with any with everybody that has a problem with um with this. I'm 41 years old. Now let me ask you a question. Being 41 years old, if I was an actor, could I play somebody who isn't? Yes. And that's kind of the point here, all right? Who's to say that our main actress is not playing a 40-something-year-old character? Who's really to say that? I mean, I'm in, I'm in my 40s, and I, and I look really good. I don't look like I'm a, in my 40s. I look like I'm in my 30s. I look damn good for 40-something years old. This actress is probably 40-something years old herself. She was probably playing a 40-something-year-old character in the movie. So, let's just say for sake of argument that the character in the movie is 40-something years old. Well, she had just been born. She was less than a year old when the Sawyer family was murdered in 1973. 83, 93... 2003, 2013. So let's just simply say that the film actually takes place 40 years after the original movie. Now, does it make sense why you have cell phones in the movie? There you go. That's, that's how you explain cell phone use in the movie. See, people assume that these characters are in their 20s. You just say they are. Maybe they're in her 40s. Or maybe she's in her 40s and her friends are younger. You gotta think about that. Well, enough about that. I think it's a great movie. Um, for what it is. I, I really think it's a great movie for what it is. Um, it's fun. It's definitely a Texas Chainsaw Massacre that has rewatch value to it. Despite all of this f negatives and flaws that people seem to think that it has, I think that it actually does work for what it is. And it's too bad they didn't make more films. So this one, I won't give it a four star rating, but I will definitely be giving this a three star rating. So I give this three stars. Foose says check it out, and I'll see you on the next one.